Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keyes, and today's part two of Backyard Bird Photography. We're gonna talk about how to plant for birds and how to plan for birds right after this. I'm here today in front of my pollinator garden, uh, one of several gardens that I have around my property. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to plant for birds or how to attract birds into your backyard. A lot of people have asked in the past, and I see some people posting once in a while, what can I plant to bring more birds into my yard? And that's a really tough question to answer because it's not as simple as I'm just going to plant one or two species of plants and get one or two species of birds. So we're gonna explore that concept a lot in this video. We're also gonna give you some recommendations, some resources. So there's a lot of links down at the bottom that we're gonna give as resources. And really the important part of this is this is not just a simple concept. I'm gonna to try to keep the video to about 15 minutes, but it's gonna hopefully open up a gateway for you to go out and explore on your own and get some more information, but I will give you some of the basics here. Now, before I get into some of the good details, let me just reference the first video that I made. And I talked about the use of feeders, attracting birds with water, which I think is a really, really big one. So while we're not gonna get into the water today, do check out that first video where I talked about that and some of the success I've had uh, just adding water onto my property. One more thing about that first video, I, I mentioned my setup and I forgot to show it. For some reason, I uploaded the wrong video copy to YouTube. So here is the very simple setup that I use. You can see I've you've got this lens coat a blanket. I'll put a link to that down in the description. It's thrown over my tripod and then I've got a little travel stool that I sit behind there and I can sit comfortably in there for an hour or two. This is what it looks like from the other side. So as I'm shooting toward the subjects, I'm 15 to 20 feet away. Some of these are larger birds, some are smaller birds. It's a pretty good sweet spot for that size bird. So anyway, this is my setup and now let's talk about some plants. I also wanted to give you a little bit of background on how I got into this. So real quickly, I'll just say a few years ago, uh, was talking about invasive species around my yard and somebody was talking about the removal of those species and I started to research that and as I researched it I really thought it was important for me at this point in my life to dedicate some time into removing the invasive species on my property and replacing them with native plants. Now I'm going to put some links down at the bottom regarding native plants and the importance of native plants into your ecosystems or into your area but I would encourage you to check those out as well. So it's not just photography today. I'm going to delve a little bit into this concept of native plants and how I got into that. But that's what I did. I've dedicated five years to removing those plants. I've gotten pretty much all the invasives off my property. I still manage those daily, but now I'm looking to just fine tune my yard and watch it bloom. So the first three years I'm, I'm completed. I've got a lot of progress done. And I'm going to show you real quickly some of the gardens that I have. I'll take you through a quick video tour of my front garden here. And then over on the side, my rain garden where I filmed my first video, my pollinator garden you already seen behind me. And then this edge of the woods restoration project that I have along a fence line where I've removed about 300 linear feet of invasive species and replaced them with a, a wide variety of native species. It's also important to understand when we talk about plants and especially with native plants, that everybody lives in a different ecosystem or eco range. So, it's important to know where you live and what plants are native to that. Now, there are some tools out there to help you. I'm gonna put a link down at the bottom for the one that I use, and I'm gonna show you quickly on the screen here how I manage that. But you can put in the state that you live in, you can put in the type of species that you're interested in, whether it's a tree or a shrub or a flower. You can even put in the height, the colors, the bloom times, and it will search the database and give you a return of plants that fit those criteria. So a really great tool to use. I've got a spreadsheet that I use as well to track. I geek out a lot on this stuff. So you can see I'm probably a little over the top with the spreadsheets, but uh, that's the way my brain works. And I found these tools to be very helpful to me. So let's get back to that concept of what do I plant to attract birds to my yard? There's a lot of different types of birds. In the first video, I talked about yard birds and breeding birds, birds that'll come into the property for the summer normally and then leave for the winter. And then there's migratory birds, birds that are just passing through. And one of my focuses was how can I draw in those migratory birds? You also have to know that where you live could make a huge difference. If you're in a, a suburban area, very residential, lawns are manicured and clean, might be a little bit tougher to do some native gardening or to supplant a lot of species in that. But really the key is getting habitats that support all wildlife. When you attract birds, you're not really planting a specific plant for a specific bird, but you're planting plants to attract things like insects, critters, bugs, all the stuff we don't usually think about. You can't get the birds often without the bugs. And while there are some birds that will feed on seed plants, 
many are feeding on insects. So you have to keep that in mind. My goal here was just to establish a better ecosystem for wildlife in general and let the birds come into that. Certainly there are some birds that are attracted to specific species. I can go out into a habitat, for example, and if I'm in the right area and there's running water and large rhododendrons and big swaths, I may expect to see a certain type of bird like a Canada warbler in that area. But I'm not going to be able to replicate that at my house. Putting in one or two rhododendron isn't going to attract a Canada warbler. It's just not that simple. With plants, there's often hosts plants for insects or caterpillars or moths. So for example, this milkweed behind me is a host for monarch caterpillars. And if I look through this plant right now, I bet you there's a monarch caterpillar somewhere on that. With insects, it's a little easier. Often you can plant a host species and the insect will come to it. Birds is quite different. While birds can be attracted to types of habitats, they're not generally attacked, attracted to one specific species. Now, one type of bird that's a little bit of an exclusion to that theory is our hummingbirds, and they can be attracted to a specific plant in a specific yard. We'll talk a little bit about hummingbirds in a minute because I do have some plants here that I'll show you that are specifically attractive to hummingbirds. But again, depending on where you live in the country, the plants that I have here on the East Coast might be much different than the ones you have on the West Coast or in another part of the world. I think the big concept is you can't necessarily think that you're going to plant one plant and get birds. You really do need to create a variety of habitats. Now let's start with this pollinator garden, what you can expect from something like a pollinator garden. You're probably not going to attract a lot of birds into it. Most of these back here uh, are going to attract insects, which are fun to watch, and butterflies. There are a few plants that I've added over here on this side, which will attract hummingbirds. And I'll list those plants here, but again, you'll have to check this part of the country that you're in to see if those plants are available to you in the native ranges, or maybe you've got something else that you could replace them with. Hummingbirds are attracted to a certain shape of flower that has nectar inside. I'll show you a few examples from around my house that I have uh, planted that do attract hummingbirds. Uh, the species that I have are cardinal flower, blue lobelia. I've got jewelweed on the side of my house that they'll explore once in a while. I've seen them in penstemon. I've seen them actually on a lot of different uh, plants. The ones they tend to like the most though are these red colored cardinal flowers. Now if you live in the other part of the country you're going to find that salvia, certain species of salvia can work very very well for hummingbirds. I've got friends that photograph on the west coast and they love those plants out there as well. It's really really fun to photograph hummingbirds. I'll tell you if you want to attract them to your yard of course you can use a hummingbird feeder. They work really well. A simple solution of water and sugar put into a specialized container will we'll bring them into your yard. But once you see hummingbirds feeding in the wild, it's really, really cool. And I don't really use those artificial feeders as much because I really just enjoy seeing them come in and explore the yard. I've got a picture here. I actually was trying to take, do something a little bit different because hummingbirds are photographed quite a bit. I was trying to take an overhead shot of hummingbirds. I would sit up on my deck uh, each night with my camera and wait for this guy to come into my cardinal flower. And sure enough, one day he did. I got some images that I liked. I wouldn't say they're my favorite of all time, but they were different. And that's one of the great things about backyard, backyard photography in general, is it gives you a chance to explore. It gives you a chance to try different things. It gives you a chance to be creative. And again, there's so many benefits with just being at your home and creating these environments. Some of it is in the ease and the distance and then other parts of it is in just you being satisfied knowing that you're creating a habitat which things are now attracted to. The other great thing about this is when you plant something like a pollinator garden like the one I have here, all of these other doors open up and I've actually taken up macro photography a lot more over the last couple years. I find myself really curious about what's going on in my yard and that's a great way to maybe divest your interests a little bit more getting beyond just photographing birds but also looking at what's going on right here on your own property. You don't have to travel very far. It's really easy on the time, and it's actually quite fun to see what's going on at a uh, macro level right inside your yard. What I really focus on when I'm attracting birds isn't so much these perennial flowering plants. That's part of the process, but what I'm really looking at is what can I do in terms of habitat? And for the birds that I like to attract, I'm probably looking at small shrubs and trees. Now let me show you quickly a couple parts of my yard where I've included these shrubs and trees. Over here in my rain garden, you can see I've added a species of hemlock. This is an evergreen, and I do get birds that actually nest in here. More importantly, it's a good year-round cover for birds. So even in the winter, I've given these birds a little bit of a place to live. In addition to the hemlocks, 
I'm also fortunate that I live up against the edge of the woods, so I didn't have to plant a lot of large trees. I had some of them existing on the back property, and that's where actually where I get most of my migratory birds. The concept of trees is important when it comes to birds for this reason. Trees often host a lot of insects and caterpillars. I'm gonna put a list down at the bottom. If you scroll into the description, you're gonna see a link that talks about, or multiple links that talk about host plants. Plants and trees that are great at attracting a lot of different insects. Oak trees are one of the best attractors and best host plants we have for all insects. I've actually added one or two oak trees on my property and you have to be a little bit careful. These are very tall trees. You wanna make sure you're in the right spot, but there are some lower cultivars of oaks and some species that might only get 20 or 30 feet tall. So take a look at that if you're, um, as you're building your gardens. When you've got taller trees, you'll give a lot more room for nesting birds. For example, I've got nesting Baltimore Orioles on my property and they only nest at a certain height. So smaller trees won't do it for them. They need trees that are 50 to 100 feet tall. They like to be off the ground a little bit more than some of the other birds. That gives me a lot more variety in my yard though. So having some tall trees is really beneficial. Now, once you get down from the canopy, one of the things you can add into your property to attract birds are gonna be shrubs or small trees. These are things between like five and 20 feet tall. On my property, I've restored some of the shrubs and trees that were on the edges of the woods, particularly spice bush, which I have found to be a remarkable plant. The birds really enjoy it. It produces a berry in the fall and it flowers early in the summer. It's a really, really great plant for me and it's also really neat to photograph in that. I've also added things like dogwoods, viburnums, elderberry. These are lower growing trees that offer a lot of protection during the summer months, also add some shade to certain areas, but they also provide nesting sites for birds. And when you're attracting birds to the yards, these shrubs can be really, really valuable. So anytime I'm encouraging somebody to plant for birds, I always say, try to get a good number of shrubs onto your property. I think you'll really, really find it helpful. And rather than just spread them out all over, sometimes it's nice to form a mass. So you'll plant a clump or a group, a large group of these together, which can provide even better habitat for the birds. And once you get down from the shrubs, now we're talking about the lower growing flowers and perennials. On my property, I think I've got about 80 to 100 species of different flowering perennials, and they bloom at all different times of the year. Now, some of these are native. They were growing in the woods, and once I removed the invasive, I've allowed them to come back and flourish. Some of them I've added to try to fill in areas or prevent it, and some of them were just curiosities of mine that I wanted to plant and see how they are. Regardless of whether they attract birds or not, they're really beautiful and I just enjoy the process of watching them bloom every year. But when it comes to birds, those perennials also provide a certain value. They do provide some insect and pollinator value for sure. So they will bring insects into your yard, which again will bring birds into your yard. They also provide seeds, which is really, really important. Remember, when we're drawing birds into the yard, we're not thinking about just a specific season. We're also talking about feeding birds as they're migrating. So when birds are coming down through your area in the fall, they're looking for food sources. And when caterpillars dry up and there aren't as many insects in the late fall, a lot of these birds will default to seed. So seed becomes an important fuel source, particularly for fall migrations and then overwintering birds. I've got sparrows that'll leave here in the spring and they absolutely flourish in my backyard. I've got so much seed around now that they can sit here and feed all winter in my backyard. And with those sparrows, sometimes a rarity might pop in and show up with them. Uh, last year on the side of my property, during fall migration, for the first time ever, I saw a morning warbler in my yard. Now that's really exciting because there's only a handful of morning warblers reported in the state each year. For me to have one sitting at the side of my house was really, really, really incredible. I'm going to show you a couple other pictures of birds that I just thought were really, really interesting as they've been migrating through. Some of these were captured on my feeders and some of them have just been captured through various places in my yard through the season. I'd mentioned earlier the use of trees on your property. And I've got two trees out in the front of my house that I've used to photograph in that I thought were really, really neat. So when you're talking about being plantful, these smaller trees, 20 to 30 feet, can give you some really nice looks, especially if you've got a second story window to shoot out of. This red bud and fringe tree that are right outside my home, I've been able to photograph birds in those from my second story guest bedroom, and that was a lot of fun as well. So in addition to the resources that are down there, the one concept I really wanted to drive home with this video, and I think it's really, really important, to attract birds to your yard, it's not one thing. There's no one magic plant or magic flower that's gonna bring birds in. It really is a combination of creating a habitat 
and a little ecosystem in your yard. I would encourage you to think about how you're treating your yard. If you want birds in your yard, if you're trying to attract them naturally without the use of feeders, you really should consider what you do with herbicides and pesticides, how much space you've committed to just turf grass, which has almost no ecological value in it, and how much space have you really committed to improving the wildlife in your area. So just think about that. It's for you to decide what's right and what's wrong for you. There are certainly aesthetics involved and changing the mindset of somebody that's used to having a, a cultivated manicured yard can be very, very tough, especially when you're in a residential area and there's pressure from your neighbors. I get all of that. In fact, my yard in the front is relatively groomed. I've got a lot of native species out there. I'll show you what that looks like. But in the back, I let it go a little bit more wild and I'm not nearly as concerned with the grass being manicured or cut. I don't use any pesticides on my property at all because I do believe if I want to create uh, a good habitat for wildlife, that pesticides shouldn't be a part of that process. So I want to thank you for joining me today. I'll show you a couple more images from around my property here as I wrap up. And some of the bird pictures that I've taken over the last three years since I've done this project, I've really, really enjoyed it. I would encourage you to explore some of the links below and do some research on your own. Hopefully I can spark some interest for some people. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comments. I actually love answering questions about plants and native plants. And if I won't be able to answer directly, I can certainly try to provide you with some resources. So make sure you let me know down in the comments. Did you like the video? Do you have any specific questions? Is there anything I missed? I can make another video. I love this stuff so much, I would do another video uh, committed to this concept. So if you want another video, let me know what the concept you'd like to see is down in the comments below. As always, thank you for your ongoing support of the channel. And I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.